Much of Liu Yang's work can be labeled under the realm of fire art, which is a term invented to categorize artworks made from living tissues, cells, and animal or human parts. Yet when you categorize artworks under these conditions, you are speaking strictly about the materiality of the pieces. So under that definition of bioarts, any artwork that has a living cell in it can be considered a bioart. But what about the content? Say, you can take as an example the famous Rembrandt painting, Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tolp. That's my favorite painting from 1631. Mine too. But my point is, do you consider this work of art a bioart? That's a great question. I think it's important to not necessarily label a work of art by one genre. So in this example, sure the work is considered a famous Enlightenment era artwork, but what's occurring in the piece could make it bio art. So the scholarly expression and exploration of the human body and life processes, even in the context of a 17th century oil painting where so much was unknown about the anatomic practice, could be enough to classify it as bio art. In the end, it depends on how we define bio art. So does it necessarily need to consist of the physical or the material, or can it merely reference it to fall under that classification? So you would consider Rembrandt's painting a work of bio art? Yes. Hmm. But it, it is an oil painting. It's not made from frog legs or anything like that. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that regardless of whether the painting is bio art or not, it does accomplish the same objectives as bio arts would um, because of its graphic portray uh, portrayal and representation of a dissected corpse. Right, so do you think an artwork can be considered bio-art even if it doesn't include organic uh, tissues? Not exactly. I'd say that, for example, in reference to Lu Yan's Uterus Man, I'm not saying that it is a work of bio-art. I mean, I'm saying that it achieves what bio-art aims to accomplish. Even though the Uterus Man is a video art in a strictly digital format, mm -hmm. It brings into my mind the thought of more living tissues, organs, cells, biological functions and processes uh, more than, say, her work, zombie, frog legs, does. Mm, so, I believe one of the reasons why you consider Uterus Man a more successful application of the bioart medium is because of the ethical issues which surround and cloud the zombie frog ballet piece. So, Lu Yang wants us to question her work and develop a critical position on ethics. Uh, whether or not you side for or against her art. So in this regard, when I watch Zombie Frog Ballet, I ask myself, is this art? Which I can quickly affirm. But after that, the question of, is this okay? Uh, arises, and I think this is a quintessential part to uh, the appreciation of her artwork. Does an artist have the authority to play God uh, with living creatures, to torture them, and in Zomb Zombie Frog Ballet's uh, case, to dissect them? Uh, surely the piece is ethically unsound. Lu Yang has even conceded that in a Happy Tree, which is another piece uh, in the same installation as Zombie Frog Ballet, that she won't show it again because of these ethical issues that surround it. Uh, but by no means do I consider this a failure. What do you think? Hmm. I think Zombie Frog Ballet is a problematic art piece because it has a distraction of ethical questions. Sure. Um, it fails as an artwork because when the audience first approaches the artwork, they don't think about the music or the dance, the choreography or mm -hmm. the performance. Okay. Um, they think, like you said, is the artwork ethical? Is it okay? Right. Is it real? In this sense, I think Zombie Frog Ballet raises the same questions as Zhang Huang's 12 square meters, mm -hmm. okay. a performance art piece. Sure. Um, it is where Zhang Huang uses his own body uh, for the sake of art. He mistreats his body by exposing himself to biohazards. And I am concerned about whether this is ethical or not, even to treat your own flesh this cruelly. You know, that's a valid point. Uh, so keeping in that in mind, would you say that performance art is bio-art necessarily because it involves the human body as a medium? That's a tricky question. I'd say that performance art as a medium um, for artistic expression is 
pretty well established in the contemporary art world.、Mm -hmm. So much so that people do not necessarily question the materiality of performance pieces、um, as much as they question the materiality of an artwork made from frog legs. Right. So, hypothetical situation that I'd like to, I would like you to respond to. So, imagine an artist shaving his head and eating his hair as a performance. Would you consider this、uh, bio art? Is there such a thing? I don't. I don't know. It's just been a concept that I've been developing. Oh well, I'd say it is. I mean, it would be a bio art because it involves a certain kind of dismemberment.、Mm. In this case, of your own hair. Right. The hair ceases to be a part of your body, and it ceases to become attractive and becomes disgusting. Exactly, an object on its own,、uh, an unnatural isolation, is on its face grotesque. Separating and individualizing、uh, collectives is what I consider a main component of bio art, or the bio art genre, because it ne it's necessary to explore gore at this micro level. The human body is an intricate、uh, machine that works in tandem with itself. Consideration of the body when we explore one part of the whole, as Liu Yang does in Frog Ballet and in Uterus Man, these are examples of vulnerability, isolation, and even ambiguity.、Uh, this concept, which I call smallness, occurs within other works of Liu Yang's portfolio as well. Take、uh, Cancer Babies, for example.、Hmm. So you say that in Cancer Babies,、uh, the individual sculpture of a cancerous cell is. Possesses the quality of smallness, not only because of its actual physical size, but more importantly because of its separation from the larger collective. In this case, it's the tumor. Right. Yeah. All right.、Um, but I think the grotesqueness is not only attributed to its smallness,、um, but also to its ambiguity, as you say.、Mm -hmm. um, cancer is an evil curse, and when you put a smile on it. Uh, you transform it into、uh, something that's kawaii, you know, something that's likable, something you probably would want to cuddle with.、Mm -hmm. And in that sense, it gives the uncanny feeling of ambiguity. Your brain does not know whether or not to like or hate the object. Right. So we're placed in this liminal space.、Uh, we have our mind wants to resolve it. We're forcing ourselves to cross this threshold. And that makes us uneasy. You know, it reminds me of Masahiro Mori's theory of the uncanny valley.、Uh, you know, where our terror, we have these terrors of things that possess a nearly but not quite human likeness. So, you can think of like dolls or, or clowns, even、uh, you know, like breast cancer babies and uterus men with their their pelvic chariots. It's all really grotesque.、Mm. But if grotesqueness is a common theme in most of Liu Yang's artwork, then why is it still so attractive? You see, Liu Yang's art explores ambiguity and isolation as smallness, and materiality and life processes through the bio art genre. Yet one perpetuating feature、uh, that makes her work so enticing is grotesqueness, as you said. I think that humans, as humans, we seek resolutions. Liu Yang poses questions, and our job is to answer them for ourselves. Is this okay? This game of question and answer throughout her portfolio is, to me, what makes her work particularly exciting. What do you think? I agree that a big part of Liu Yang's work、um, has to do with raising questions, particularly the ethical questions.、Mm -hmm. um, but they are also very skillfully created objects. Uh, for example, cancer babies. It is not only an artwork, but it is mass produced to become accessories, and that's a huge plus for the effectiveness of the piece and the, its popularity. And I think that Universe Man is not only a digital art video, but also a video game. You、right. know, people can actually play with it, interact with it, and it fulfills many functions.、Mm -hmm. But as for zombie frog legs, I still think it's not as effective as Yuri's man or Cancer Babies because it does not fulfill any function beyond raising ethical questions.、Mm. So, the utility of art, the utility of the art.、Mm. Lots of、uh, ideas floating around today. Do you、uh, let's grab some coffee? Maybe some other time. I was actually thinking of creating some bio art myself.、Mm, All this conversation about Liu Yan's artworks has given me some inspiration.
Would you happen to have a pregnant cat, a double-headed turtle, a tarantula with two missing legs, a rabbit tooth, a salmon head prosthetic, and three goldfish with a combined weight of two pounds?